Hello students, under differential calculus, we are now in the topic continuity and discontinuity functions part 1. So let's get on to the presentation. So before starting what is continuity and discontinuity, so let's have the concept of limits. So in the previous lecture you would have uh, learned what is the limit of a function. So limit x tends to a minus f of x is equal to limit x tends to a plus f of x is equal to capital L. Just observe the figure on the right. So there is a curve named y is equal to f of x, right? And the intersection point of all this will be exactly at L limit. So hence limit of x tends to a f of x is equal to capital L. What does it mean of a minus and a plus? Which means that the function is approaching, the x value is approaching f of x from the left side of a. Here a plus in the sense the function, the value of x approaches the function f of x from right side of a. So continuous functions. So a function is said to be continuous at x is equal to a right? if, if it satisfies two conditions. This is very necessary for a function to be continuous. First, f of x is well defined at x is equal to a. So we can talk about a function is continuous at a particular point. When the function is well defined at that particular point, also the limit exists. Which means when I substitute limit x tends to a f of x which is equal to f of a. Right? That is f of x is continuous at x is equal to a means that the graph y is equal to f of x has no break at x is equal to a. In other words, okay, to basically understand the concepts of a continuity function, there is no break at that particular point. There is always, the curve is always continuous. right? So you can observe the two diagrams here, a and b, where you have two types of curves. right? And see here, the value of x is a here. The corresponding value of y can be called as f of a, right? So, because you say that y is equal to f of x, y is a dependent variable. So, automatically if I substitute the value of a in place of a, x, I will be landing up with f of a. So, that will be the corresponding value of y there. In the same way here, if I take the value of a on the x-axis, then I will substitute and find out what is the value of y. The corresponding value of y will be f of a. So this is the concept of continuous function. So here, first the function should be well defined at x is equal to a and the limit x tends to a f of x should be equal to f of a. Now what is discontinuity function as a contrast? A function f of x is said to be discontinuous at x is equal to a if it is not continuous at x is equal to a. It's very simple, right? So when I say a function is continuous, you have to say that it satisfies the two conditions. I'm repeating the first condition is the function should be well defined at the particular point. Second condition is the limit of the function approaching x is equal to that particular point A, which will be resulting in f of A itself. Then it will be called as a continuous function. So if it is not continuous, if it is not satisfying these two properties or any one of the property then it will be called as a discontinuous function. So you have a um, sample of three different types of discontinuous functions. See there is some break there, there is not continuous curve. So you have some break over there or there is some disturbance between the curves. So this is called as discontinuity functions. So the key point, this is very, very important for, uh, especially in the study of differential calculus, one should know the next topic or the later, later topics will be differential functions, etc. So you should know a differentiable function. So whenever I say a function is differentiable, the function should be continuous at every point of its domain. This is very, very important because any differentiable function is continuous in its domain. But the converse is not true. So what does it mean the converse? Every continuous function need not to be differentiable. This is very important. 
we cannot say every continuous function is differentiable. There might be continuous function which may not be differentiable but whereas you can take any differentiable function. If I say a function is differentiable, I can blindly agree that that particular function is continuous. So continuous in the sense two properties should be satisfied. So now let's uh, explain uh, the uh, continuous. Let's take a sample problem for the discussion. So before getting on to the discussion of this particular problem, let's have a recap of what is a continuous function. So a function f of x is said to be continuous when it satisfies the two conditions. So what are they? Just can you just have a uh, just have a brush up over the uh, slides what you have seen? Number one, the function f of x should be well defined at x is equal to a. So not only a, that particular point a can be taken as any point in that particular interval or whatever it may be. So not always it should be a any point. So the function should be defined at that particular point A. Number two, the second condition. When limit of x approaches that particular point A, f of x, the function will be changed as f of A. So when a function f of x satisfies the two conditions, then I can call that f of x as a continuous function. If it does not satisfy the conditions, then it can be called as a discontinuous function. And you also know that every differentiable function is continuous in its domain. Whereas every continuous function need not be differentiable. And also, as we have seen in the very first slide of this presentation, I had told you the concept of limits where we can also prove the continuity of a function through limits. How do I prove it through limits? I say that if I want to call a particular point is a continuity point for that particular function, then I can prove the left hand limit and the right hand limit coincides at that particular point. I repeat, if I want to prove a function f of x, is continuous at a point A, then I can prove the left hand limit and right hand limit of that particular point A coincides. Then I can clearly come to a conclusion that the a function f of x is continuous. Now let's get on to the problem. The question is test the continuity of f of x which is equal to e power x if x is less than 0 and x square if x is greater than or equal to 0. Right. So now how to find for which point. Right. So there is a major breakthrough here. At 0 the interval breaks. Right. So less than 0 that is the values below 0 the function is taking e power x. And for the values from 0 onwards towards the right the function takes the value x square. So now let's test the continuity at x is equal to 0 because 0 is the major issue here. So let's test the continuity at 0. So we have to find the left and right limits. So how do I find the left and right limits? Limit x tends to 0 minus which means it is not negative 0. 0 it is approaching 0 from the left side. So f of x. So when I approach 0 from my left side what is the function e power x? So I have to use this function e power x. So now if I substitute 0, right, 0, what happens? e raised to the power 0, what do I get? e raised to the power 0 is 1. So for my left hand side limit is 1. Now let's move on to the right limit. Right limit, limit x tends to 0 plus. So what does 0 plus means? We are approaching 0 from the right side. So from the right side f of x is equal to limit x tends to 0 plus. What is the function when x is approaching from right x square? We should not use e power x. We should use x square here. Why? Because it is clearly defined in the problem. So x square. So if I substitute the value of x as 0, my answer is 0. 
So now you could clearly say, see that your left limit and your right limit are not equal. One, the first value is 1 and the second value is 0. So therefore limit x tends to 0 plus f of x which is not equal to limit x tends to 0 minus f of x and hence limit x tends to 0 f of x does not exist. Therefore the function f is discontinuous at x is equal to 0. I hope you understood this. Clear. So suppose if the left hand limit and right hand limits are equal, then you can say they are continuous function or it is continuous at that particular point. Thanks for watching. Let's continue in the second part of continuity and discontinuity functions.